the name of God, of his Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We welcome you to our service today as we orientate our thoughts and our intentions towards the beginning of Lent, which is on Ash Wednesday, the 23rd, because I intentionally mention it now so that it doesn't shock us. It came so quick. So you are forewarned and in all the ways that you are preparing for that. And a special welcome to those of you who have traveled many distances to be here and those who just came from around the corner. In all ways, we assemble with the joy of knowing that God has taken us through the night and brought us to the fresh breath of this new day. Our service is on page 104 of the prayer book and in the absence of the choir we will sing the Gloria in the format of the hymn that's on the loose page that has been handed to you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Service continue on page 105 in your prayer books. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophet. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. The first reading is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8, and it is read in Isiklos. Kanive agutetayo uyehova, uti suga ume ubamba nenendaba, indu li zilive ilizulako. Yivani zindaba, ukubamba na kuka yehova, nani zimagade, ziseko zomshaba. Ukuba uyehova, ubambe nena bantu bake, uya kupigisana na masirayeni. Bandubam, then send on in a gun, dinitin is saying and on in a dependulen, Goguba and Danny Musa as when La Seyuputa, Danny Kulula and Rin Yamakoboka, the Tuma Pambiguenu, or Moses, no Aaron, no Miriam. Bandubam, Ganiku Kumbule, Utrebisa, Goka Palaki, Ukumgani, Wakamoab, Nogu Pendul, Goka Pilam, Unyana, Kapehor, Etabatella, Eshitam. Wada wese ekelia ekeligali. Uguze niyazi imisebenzi ka Yehova, yobulungisa. 
Diya kumkhaulela u Yehova ndina ndoni na. Diye kuzikoba na kutiko opezo. Diya kumkhaulela ndina matini anyuka ayona. Ndina matole amnyaga amnye na. Wokoliswa na u Yehova ngama waga engundi ze zimbu. Ngama waga alishumi emilambo ye oli. Ndo khola. Uwa mazibulo na nge nga yeze kato zamu. Isi kamo som zimba wam na nge nga ye sono som pefumlo wam. Ukelelewe mtundini okulungi leyo akubizayo uye hova kuwe. Kuguti wenze okuse sikweni utande ingeba uhambe no tiko wako ngo kutoza mileyo. Hear the word of the Lord. We turn to our pew leaflets on this inside of the pew leaflet, Psalm 15. We will read this psalm and we will read it antiphonally. I will read up to the colon and the congregation respond by reading the rest of the verse. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Whoever leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing which is right. Who has done no evil to a friend? In whose eyes the worthless have no honor. Whoever has sworn to a neighbor. Who has not put money to usury? Whoever does these things? Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is written in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, reading verses 18 through to 31. For the message about Christ's death on the cross is nonsense to those who are being lost, but for us who are being saved, it is God's power. The scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and set aside the understanding of the scholars. So then, where does that leave the wise? All the scholars, all the skillful debaters of this world, God has shown that this world's wisdom is foolishness. For God in his wisdom made it impossible for people to know him by means of their own wisdom. Instead, by means of the so-called foolish message we preach, God decided to save those who believe. Jews want miracles for proof, and Greeks look for wisdom. As for us, we proclaim the crucified Christ, a message that is offensive to the Jews and nonsense to the Gentiles. But for those whom God has called, both Jews and Gentiles, this message is Christ, who is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For what seems to be God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and what seems to be God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Now remember what you were, my brothers and sisters, when God called you, from the human point of view, few of you were wise or powerful or of high social standing. God purposefully chose what the world considers nonsense in order to shame the wise. And he chose what the world considers weak in order to shame the powerful. He chose what the world looks down on and despises and thinks 
is nothing in order to destroy what the world think is important. This means that no one can boast in God's presence. But God has brought you into union with Christ Jesus, and God has made Christ to be our wisdom. By him, we are put right with God. We become God's holy people and are set free. So then, as the scripture says, whoever wants to boast must boast of what the Lord has done. Hear the word of the Lord. Lord be with you. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of Christ.
summer day, asked the question at the conclusion of her poem, tell me what it is you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. Tell me what it is you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. Look at the text that we've, Father Michael just proclaimed now, of Matthew chapter 5. That it's just as Jesus has been inaugurated into his calling, into his life ministry, the baptism in the, the river Jordan, and then he proceeds to be tested as we will invite our own spirits to be taken out of its comfort zone as we move towards Lent from Ash Wednesday onwards. So on the one hand, we have this moment, and in South African history, the Sermon on the Mount is akin to a mass meeting. That is our united democratic front instance when we were not guided by party politics but by the organized love of justice and the desire for freedom. That moment in our history it was there in the 1940s perhaps it was even as Madiba said when he had a, spoke at the Steve Bantu Eco Memorial Lecture a few years ago at the University of Cape Town, and it reminded towards the end of his sterling speech, he segued in an off-the-cuff comment, and he reminded us as an audience that the first umkonto, the first spear of resistance was raised here in the 1500s at what was then known as Woodstock Beach when Khoi men routed the Marines of the Portuguese royalty and defeated them. They had plundered a crowd which was now in the vicinity of, or was then in the vicinity of what is Falkenberg or Odomolen at that end of the Lisbeck River. Had raided the kraal, had taken cattle, and also, we believe, children, and the men were out hunting when they came, they heard about it. And Madiba reminded us that we were a people that fought back, that were organized, and throughout the 40s, the 1950s, the 1960s, and then in that high point from the launch of the UDF, that brought us all together into a mighty fist of resistance. And this moment here of the Sermon of the Mount is the manifesto of Jesus. And then from everything that happens between that moment on that is depicted out of his life, the narrative of, of this young prophet from Galilee but then culminates there in the Matthew chapter 25 when he tells us to be alert and then comes the arrest and then it is his treason trial of Matthew 26. But what are we going to do with our one wild and precious life? So when Jesus talks about the blessings of the Beatitudes, Blessed are they who mourn, who are grief-stricken. Blessed are those who are denied justice. Blessed in this moment of the Beatitudes. It's not to the elite. It is not to the sophisticated. It is not to the rabbis or to the deans or the bishops or the elite of organized religion. It is to the ordinary it is the one who are the victims and the sufferers on the outskirts of society. 
the one who are deemed not to be blessed, the one who have not known the favor of Yahweh. It is to them in their multitudes, not the twelve, or the intimacy of the post-transfiguration appearance. No. It is the ones who came out of curiosity, out of desperation, and is speaking to them as he speaks to us this day. Where are we in all of this? Blessed are those whose hearts are pure. But for where we are in our country, it is this particular verse, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. And peacemakers is intentionally throughout everything that makes of poverty because of poverty there can't be peace. Anything that makes for gangsterism and drug addiction, there can't be peace. And when we militate, whether we are claiming the name of God or where we say there is no God, but when we do these things, here we are, we shall be called the children of children of God and as how we love intentionally because these blessings are not just like the rain that falls on everybody and the sun that shines on the rich and poor the blessings are the outcomes of an intention the choices that we make on Tuesday I had reason to go to the doctor and then I received a call from my dear younger sister, Denise, who told me that mom is really passing. And I went through because I came straight from Canal Walk to Matrus Fontaine and my mom, or when I saw uh, my mom's appearance, it sort of confirmed what Denise was saying. You know what we say, the Dwadrochel? sound and the mouth is open and the cheeks are uh, sort of caved in and then eventually she fell asleep Denise and I said the evening office with her well we said it for her because she was not conscious really and then we sat in the lounge and I said well mom is starting to look a bit better but then Denise told me that the day before my mother had called her into the bedroom. And since mid-November, when my mom turned 90, she had a stroke just a few days, if not the day of her birth. So the left side particularly was paralyzed. She didn't really say anything. So now and then she said our names with the exclusion of my name. I said, Mom, when I tease my mom, I call her Sheila. You've known me the longest, and I'm the only one whose name you don't say. She hasn't said my name yet. But then he said on Monday, my mom just had a resurgence of energy and said to her, great clarity, my sister-in-law, Karen, was sitting on the other side of the bed, and my mom said to her, I am dying. You love me to death. And that is very bad. You have to let me go. And I pondered over that moment, this interaction between daughter and mother. And the, my, 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 my baby sister is my mom in all the ways of her abilities fulfilled. In another context, my mom would have looked differently with another set of of education to work with her skills and her passion and her aptitude. Denise fulfills that. And that umbilical cord is there in spirit. And I said to Denise, and we both concurred, it is actually a blessing that you've been given. And you are the voice to all of us to be prepared. And my mom is still breathing. Yesterday, when Bonita and I saw her, she was in and out, sleeping, falling asleep. And they will hear stories about 
who came to visit her the night before, and she mentioned Auntie Olive. She mentioned my brother Mark, my late brother. And so we know that the beloved ancestral gathering is taking place for some reason at the foot end of the bed. We've always been told that children, Murid Astani, that is where the dead gather. And the niece said, yes, it is a blessing. And she then, out of the blue, she said, our mother raised us on her knees. She raised us on her knees. And I remember when she told me that of the Psalm 40, you lifted me up from the deep mire and clay. And there's a song that I remember from the five, age five, and we sang it until we said prayers with her in the course of this week. You lifted me up from the deep mire and clay, planted my feet on Canaan's highway. For this is the reason I sing and I shout. When Jesus came down, oh, we lifted me up. That is a blessing of a life lived intention. And it never, the road was never easier. We're still living in Matros Fontaine. We lived, we got upgraded from Eitzel O scheme where there was no electricity. And now we're living in a house with electricity. You know, the toilet inside, the toilet was outside. And we lived before that in the backyard of an Indian businessman. We never saw blessing in material things. And there were, one day at the age of about 10, I said, I'm tired of being poor. <laughs> mother said, what did you have for breakfast? I said, a cup of coffee, free coffee, and a sandwich. And he had four slices of bread in the Tupperware to school. And he had supper. Say, Asi Arami. That is not poverty. So she whacked that by example out of us. But she loved a beatitudinal life as she continues to breathe. And this is what the Beatitudes is to us. It is the choices that you and I are invited to make and to frame it in the way that Matthew chapter 5 calls us to be peacemakers who will count the cost. It is a good choice to make at this time as we turn our hearts away from the cradle at Bethlehem and towards the hill of Golgotha beyond Jerusalem where our Savior calls us and where he invites us to question what we will do with our one wild and old soul most precious life. One God.
the congregation's response to let us pray to the Lord is, Lord, have mercy. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through our outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, we, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, this morning we pray for Sheila Weida as he, she's awaiting your coming and she's awaiting to be carried away. Make her comfortable. We pray for Barry Smith and for Stuart von Kran. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the, the departed, we pray for the year's mind of Monica Allen. We pray for the repose of the soul of Shimonet Bass. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To thee, O Lord, our God. Amen. Sorry, it's just some post-prayer consultation. Um, friends, please, um, if you could start bringing your palm crosses, because we will be burning it during Shrove Tide, the three days before Ash Wednesday, and that will then constitute the ashes that we will use on Ash Wednesday. We also pray for Ron, one of our science persons who's a family member has recently passed on and we pray for comfort for him and for his loved ones and all those who grieve her passing as we've heard in the prayers today. Would you please stand for the sharing of the peace? Also bear in mind, um, Father, I can't read out his handwriting. Good as mine. Uh, please all Father Marcus in prayer. He's, we read about him in, in Micah chapter 8. When the wool from 
at one door that begins with the S to Gilgal now. He's not yet at Gilgal. And <laughs> um, he's got diarrhea, so it's not a nice place to be in your life. So may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always.
good moment for us to be mindful of what is written here in the pew leaflet, the words, the reflection of the Trappist monk, uh, Father Thomas Merton, when he's standing in a corner in the city, on the corner of a street, and he has a wonderful epiphany where he says, he had a sense of liberation from an illusory difference, and that it was such a relief and such a joy to me that I almost laughed out loud. I have the immense joy of being a man, a member of a race in which God himself became incarnate as if the sorrows and the stupidities of the human condition could overwhelm me. Now I realize what we all are. And if only everybody could realize this, but it cannot be explained. There is no way of telling people that they are all walking around shining like the sun. What a beautiful way to look at ourselves, to just look at the person next to you. And if you're not too shy, just look at the person next to you. They might not look too sunny, but that is what Thomas Merton believes, the incarnation lives in us and is what we will celebrate now in this Eucharistic moment. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and indeed our duty and joy. Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And today we give you thanks because in coming to dwell among us as the Word made flesh, Jesus revealed the radiance of your glory and brought us out of darkness into your own marvelous light. And therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever saying, Sivebaugenkarakukastuinkosiatu, <laughs> Waza akubabulele kuwe, wasi kakeza, wabanika bafundi baki ya sita. Taba dani nitle, loo gunzimba wamo nikalelu wa nina, oku kwenzeleni, oku dikumbulu. Kananjala wemba kuwe sito, sangu kutwa, what about I in Debe? Was a cubebele cue? Wabanica is it? Selani quia nonke? Ubele legazi lam non copy so omcha? Alepa la lella nina, nabaninzi ukuze is on as a colelue. Gama clash or onke and is a cubanisela cuyo? O cuque and zeleni, uku di cumbula.
so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, will come again. The veil of Jesse dwelt in upstanding on all, offer ons for e, iri brood and iri picker. Father, ons dank je dat u ons waardig gemaakt het om in u teenwoordigheid te staan en u te dien. Ons vraag u om u heilige geest op die offer van u heilige kerk neer te stuur. Voor enig aanmaal wat in u heilige verborgenheid deelneem, vervul hulle met u heilige geest en bevestig hulle geloof in u waarheid. So dat ons u saam mag loof in u. Dear the dinner, Jesus Christ, mag for you, all the air and the earlikheid say on you, Father and Seer, with the Heilige Geest and the Heilige Kerk, now and for you. Amen. So as Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, sharing of the body of Christ. and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Hidden him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Behold who we are.
musician may come forward now.
give thanks unto the Lord, for God is gracious. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, send us out into the world, the power of the Holy Spirit, to love and work. to be anointed for a prayer of thanks, please uh, join the prayer and anointing group led by Father Michael in the St. John Chapel immediately after the service. And so the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. We stand. So, beloved, the Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.